Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we have a match or a game between me, um, Sparta King, and 24-7 Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, we are both playing Eldlick, so I'm playing Eldlick and he's playing Invoked Eldlick. So um, be sure to check out his channel. I'll leave the link in the description. He's a great Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTuber. I think you'll enjoy a lot of his content. Um, so once again, um, go subscribe to 24-7 Yu-Gi-Oh! And remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment down below, and like this video. Okay, so let's get right into it. So I have won the rock, paper, scissors. And so I have our, or no, sorry, he won. So he decides to go first. Okay. So he stand by me. He starts by activating Black Awakening to special summon Eldlick directly from the deck. He sets one, and it's a hard pass. So he draws to Elric, the Golden Lord, and so basically, um, the whole point of the deck is to like control the field, and then you have a lot of recurring resources. So we start by going extravagance. We banish six for cost, and then, sadly, he does Ash to the extravagance. So we basically went neg six. But that is okay, as we have a lot of plays with our hand. Um, we start next play, sorry. So we activate Cursed Eldland, which we activate the effect of, which makes us pay 800 life points. So we can add Hakuero of the Golden Land, um, which we activate Eldlick, so effect after, to pitch it and the Hakuero. And then we send his Eldlick, but he chains Hakuero of the Golden Land to my Eldlick effect to send his Eldlick to the grave. So basically, it summons, and then it banishes a card from my graveyard. Um, Yeah, Um, and so he banishes my Hakuero. So after I activate Eldlick's effect to special summon itself by or to add it back to hand, and then special summon a zombie monster from my hand by sending Chris Eldlick, which will trigger Chris Eldlick's effect, to send another um, Hakuero. And then we just go into battle phase and attack. <clears throat> Main phase two, we activate Zombie World. Um, we set um, Conquistador and our Counter Trap. And then in the end phase, we can activate Hakuero Effect to banish it and set an Eldlixer Spell Trap directly from the deck, um, which he changed to his own Hakuero. So he um, sets White Destiny and I set um, Scarlet Sanguine. So now it is his turn. And so draw phase, stand by me. He activates Black Awakening and Grave Effect. Um, so I chain Scarlet Sanguine which um, allows us both basically to do separate things. I special summon Doom King Baldurok from deck. And he has the ability to now to set Conquistador directly from his deck. You'll notice that Eldlick is a really grindy deck. So the turns basically go back and forth. Over here, he activates Magical Meltdown, which I negate. This would be his invoked side of the deck, which later on in the game, you'll be seeing a lot more of. And um, basically... The whole point, though, is to, you want to control the field by, oh, he goes by Destiny, but you want to control it by spamming it with Eldlick and then cards that support it and Zombie World and stuff like that. And then he goes into Battle Phase and attacks over on Doom King. So that goes to Grave, Main Phase 2. And then End Phase, we go into Draw Phase and Standby Phase, we activate Doom King Baldurok Effect. And Baldurok, he chains Conquistador um, to special summon and pop my zombie world. Now, over here, neither of us exactly knew if Baldurok was going to resolve. But we ended up looking it up. And so since Baldurok did activate, it still resolves even though zombie world left the field. So here we go. We special summon the Baldurok from Grave in defense position because we cannot go and attack. Um... Next up, what we are going to do is we're going to activate Elixir of White Destiny to special summon our own Elix, the Golden Lord, from our grave. Now, he thinks over here, 
And then um, I activated the effect of white, which I later, right now, basically found out that I could not do. So I was not aware of the fact that they were actually each effect. Um, you can only use one once per turn. So keep that in mind when you're playing this. So the mirror match is very, very grindy. So you'll see that as this goes on. I activate um, the effect of Scarlet Sanguine in Graveyard to banish and set a Golden Land spell trap directly from deck where I sent Hawkwero. And then I activate my own Conquistador to pop his Eldlick and summon itself. We go into battle phase and attack over it. Over here, I'm not sure if that was the best play because then he can have the effect in Graveyard, but I feel like it was fine because I didn't want him to have an extra free extender. So we attack into that, we go into main phase two, and then of course into our end phase, where we pass in draw phase standby, or in draw phase, sorry, I activate um Hawkwero. So we banish his outlook so he wouldn't get the effect. So we summon the Hawkwero and go into standby. And then main. In main, he activates Cursed Eldland. So he pays 800 life points. And then he adds Eldlick from deck to hand. So he sends Eldlick in an invocation to the grave. And he sends my Doom King Baldrock, which is very, very unfortunate. And you'll realize that since I don't have Zombie World anymore, Baldrock does not get the negations or anything like that. So we keep on going over here. And so he sends his um, Eldland, which triggers Eldland effect. And then um, Golden Lord is at 3,500 attack and cannot be destroyed by card effects until the end of my turn. He sends Hakuro from deck to grave. He activates it. But then I correct him. That was um, both of our mistakes. Um, it can only be activated in end phase, so be sure to remember that. So he activates White Destiny and Grave, banishing it. So you probably noticed that all of them have the effects of basically, they have like a graveyard effect and they banish and summon or and set um, spell and trap cards from deck. So basically he sets the counter trap, it goes into battle phase, attacks over my Eldlick. So I take 1000 points of damage. In the end phase, he activates Conquistador, banishing and setting a White Destiny. Um, then he goes and activates his, um, Hakuero to set Black Awakening. And then we start my turn and we go and we draw into Conquistador. So the good thing about this deck is that you don't really need to have cards in hand or on field to play. Your graveyard is very good in general. Necro Valley would hurt a lot with this deck. Necro Valley would definitely suck. I activate White Destiny, where he lets it go through. This, right now, it doesn't seem like that for you, but it has been a 28-minute game one until now. And um, so we set Conquistador. Um, and basically what happens is that we activate Outlook Effect in Graveyard. So it's cost to send, and then he negates. And then on resolution, he's going to activate White Destiny to special summon back the Eldlick. And then I go into main phase two. I set my Conquistador in end phase. I go Hakuero, which was actually the reason of why I went Eldlick so I could have access to White Destiny to summon it during his turn. But you notice that now during his turn, where he almost um, has game over here, um, I decide to hold on to it, he activates Meltdown. So he searches Alistair. But as I was saying, like I decided not to activate my back row because I saw that he wouldn't have um, game. And, I, and it gave me just enough the amount of follow-up plays that I needed. So he normal summons Alistair and activates the effect to search Invocation. I'm sure you guys all know this part very well because of Invoke Chadals and so. He links summons into Salmangri Al Mirage, activating Invocation to go with um, Alistair and Al Mirage into Purgatrio. And over here, you can see that it's almost game as Purgatrio inflicts piercing. Um, I forgot about the gaining 200 attacks, so 
I we kind of messed up the life points here, but then we fixed it right after. And then um, here we go. I take the extra damage that I was supposed to. And then we over here realized that he actually could have won as he had the Black Awakening, which can summon his um, another Eldic, which would have been enough for game. But um, if he did do that before, then I did have um, White Destiny protecting. Then um, he goes a uh, different, so he goes White Destiny effect, setting another counter trap. And then we go into end phase. We're in end phase. I go um, Conquistador effect to set an Eldlixir Spawner trap directly from deck. We set Black Awakening, and over here, we have four back row and no cards in hand, um, two of them being Conquistador, one Eldlixir of Black Awakening, and one White Destiny. So this is a lot. So that's the thing about this deck. Like, it's very, very grindy. So that's what I really like about this deck. So um, it's my turn now. So um, over here, we go into draw phase. We draw into Glow a Bloom, which is not the best, but at the same time, we can use it. Um, so I try to activate, um, what's it called? Outlook, engrave, and he negates. Then I activate White Destiny to summon my Outlook. So after that, we have a lot of plays here. So we activate Conquistador to pop the Purgatrio. Special summon in that. We change to defense position. We normal summon Glow Up Bloom. Then we, uh, I over here realized that I banished my sucker, but that is still okay. Oh, that's a misclick over here. So I actually go into Avenged Savior. This is a very good card. It's an alternative and, um, I activate Black Awakening after, which allows me to summon a second Eldlick, but sadly I cannot go into Gustav Max <laughs> because I activate and I can only summon zombies for the rest of the turn. Um, we banish Glow Bloom, which allows us to add our Baldrock directly from deck to hand. We attack over it, and over here, I actually did not have a level five or higher, so I could not actually beat over Avenged Savior which we fix in a second because I send Necroworld Banshee and then I take 100 and it's destroyed. And in the end, out of this whole exchange, he only took 2,500 points of damage. We crash. And then in main phase two, I activate Banshee effect to add the one and the only zombie world and activate it. In end phase, we go into end phase and pass. So in standby, Baldrock effect activates finally uh, to special summon. We go, um, he goes extravagance, which I do not have response to as Baldrock only negates um, monster effects. He normal summons Alistair and does not activate the effect, which clues me in that he probably has invocation in hand. So we kind of deduce that. And then after, he activates the invocation, so we were correct. And he uses the Ash, which is a fire, which I forgot he had, and the invoker to summon Purgatrio. But thankfully, we activate the Conquistador to pop it and summon. And over here, he activates Udland. He pays 800, sets a Conquistador, and then he has to pass in an end phase. We activate our Conquistador to set Black Awakening. And as you can see over here, we outgrinded him and we have everything we need. And that is game. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Once again, please go subscribe to 24 seven Yu-Gi-Oh and check out his content. It's very nice. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like and comment down below. And I will see you next time. And remember, this um, deck was the one that I profiled earlier in my channel. Go check it out. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.